Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and when we think of messaging it plays a huge role may it be in personal life or may it be in AWS. So today we are going to talk about what are messaging queues and then we will also dig deep into what is AWS simple queue service and what impact does it have on messaging. So if you are ready let's begin. But before starting with SQS, so we need to have a brief understanding of what are messaging queues. If I ask you right now, can you tell me what a queue is or what are queues? So what would be your answer here? Uh, you might tell me that queues are like a set of people waiting for their turn one by one. Or some of you might tell me that it's a data structure where elements are processed in a sequence and we can add new elements at the end of the queue or we can remove them from the front as well. And all these answers that you have here have a commonality that we want to process data sequentially, unless it's a double-ended queue, of course. So mostly when we think of queues, it's basically a V4 structure that is first in, first out. So the message or data that comes first is executed first. But having said this, there are ways actually these messages or data can be processed. For this, Let's go to a fast food drive-in store and let's grab a burger and let's see how they process the information at hand. I am sure everyone out here is aware of how the drive-in takeaways work. So it's very simple, you have a drive-in queue and you drive towards the station counter. So It's more like what you see in a toll gate. Here the only difference is that you place the order for food and on the next counter you get the food packet that you have requested for. So here a single person or car only can pass through at once and place the order. And the order is placed one person at a time. Hypothetically speaking, in this scenario or in the scenario that the chef is cooking one order at a time. Okay, so don't try to validate this situation. It's a make-believe hypothetical scenario. Okay, so here you can see the food counter and the billing station and the service is provisioned to you by the server or the person who is taking the order from you. And they travel or the people who are actually uh, willing to process the order or willing to have some food, they travel in a single queue uh, where each request or order is processed only once. And the number 1, 2, 3, 4 that you see here, the order numbers are processed sequentially. And these type of queues are also called as FIFO. And if you consider each request or food order as messages, the processing here can be termed as sequential message processing. I hope you're getting the idea. So I want you to imagine this being a situation where you have multiple producers and a single consumer that is here to process the request or what we also call as a message. But if this was sequential, then let's see another real time example. So now let's move from the drive in takeaways straight to the restaurant. I hope I'm sure actually I'm, I'm not hoping I'm sure everyone here has visited a restaurant before and every restaurant has tables where people usually sit and have food. And we have our section like the kitchen section and the billing section as usual. And every restaurant has our service members who are here to help us in taking our orders and users here can place a request in any order and they can be served based on the response that they get from the chefs. And that can be in any order as well. And if you see here, not all customers are placing orders or placing orders to have food. Some of them have already finished their lunch or dinner and they are waiting for the bills to be processed. Here you can see we have multiple producers and multiple consumers who can process messages based on the type of messages they receive. And these messages will be processed asynchronously, not synchronously, asynchronously. So these messages are being taken by a single queue and shared across consumers who can process this information or message. This is basically your second type of message queue processing, which is asynchronous processing. Here you can see one more type of synchronous communication where we have a caller making a phone call to the receiver. You have to understand that for synchronous communication or messaging, there must be a user who should be active all the time listening to your messages so that you can communicate actively with the user. But can you tell me 
what could be the problem here if the connection breaks due to any problem or any technical issues the users will not be able to communicate with each other and that's where we mostly rely on asynchronous messaging or communication you must be thinking why am i giving all these examples and taking your time and not getting right into the topic it's because i want you to understand why we use messaging queues and why sqs is so important to us and why the sqs queue has been so popular with the users and this is one of the most important services considering the exam so we have to understand this completely before moving forward to the actual concept so enough of these real time examples or real world examples let's get into something substantial and let's check what a messaging queue actually does so if we talk about the definition that aws gives is that a message queue is a form of asynchronous service to service communication used in serverless and microservices architecture what we can understand based on the previous examples we saw is that the messaging queue helps us to work with or work in accordance with asynchronous communication or what we can also call as async protocol where the sender of the message and the one who is receiving the message or is going to receive the message don't have to interact with the message queue at the same point of time these messages that we see here are placed in the queue for the consumers to consume and that is why in messaging queue protocol terms we call the sender as producers and the receivers as consumers so now tell me are you able to relate it with the example i gave you when i spoke about the restaurant the customers and the chefs in the restaurant don't have to interact with the servers or waiters at the same time and that's why i gave that example maybe it can't be accurately depicted the same way as to be reciprocated in computing terms but the idea actually here remains the same and when we talk about messaging queue here messages placed in the queue are stored there until the recipient or the consumer retrieves them processes them and deletes them and as you can see i have mentioned here that messages are stored in the queue until they are processed and deleted when it comes to computing terms we must remember that each message is processed only once by a single consumer the fourth point which is a really important point as we have mentioned here that message queues can be used to decouple heavyweight processing or to buffer or batch work and to smooth out spiky workloads so here as well i want to give you a real time example that can be applied when working with microservices or next gen software architectures so let's suppose you're working on a product whose end result is users being able to send an alert that the job that you are executing is completed or successful or has failed so there might be thousands of users using this product and they might be pushing in jobs and executing them and trying to send the alert isn't it if i tell you the alerting service that you have can only raise one alert at a time can you tell me how much time do you think a user would have to wait for a single job alert to be propagated based on the condition that it's only a single api call surely you would say oh that can take a lot of time for that to be processed so what we can do here so what we can do is we can enhance the design of the application and enable our alerting service to push the alerts onto the messaging queue which will be a part of the message and we can process these messages without having to worry about a bottleneck and the users can push the job id in the message queue and sit back and relax so that it can process the information at hand asynchronously and the users can get their alerts when it's available without having the api call to wait for the success response immediately so you might ask but how will you process so many messages using just queues for that i would say watch the video till the end but for now i just want to tell you that i'm aware that there might be other solutions to this problem but i'm speaking in terms of giving you an example of how the messaging queue can be helpful that is why it's mentioned here that messaging queues can help us decouple 
okay if you ask me what decouple means the decouple means that it helps us to disassociate or divide or separate heavy weight processing and it can also be used as a buffer or to execute batch work okay so that's what it means like you aren't worried about when the alert is sent to the user from the application you just want the information to be out there that please alert this to the users that's it so here what you have done you have very smartly disassociated your application and the alert system using the message queue so i hope that was clear let's move on so let's see the visualization here and let's understand how the messaging queue is structured so when you think of message queues think of this entity to be a communication mechanism between applications or services within an application we all know that in a well architected and optimally decoupled product or application there are multiple services that talk to each other so a producer that you see here can be considered as an application or a service within the application trying to communicate with any other service within the application structure so this communication can be either synchronous or asynchronous but when we start using the message queue we want the communication to be disconnected or disassociated or decoupled so these are our three consumers or the second part of our terminology that are waiting to consume or process a task or what we call as the message and these messages are produced or sent by the producers to the queue so when we say this term message queue we have to focus on that second part that is called the queue the queue that you see here is waiting for the messages to come so that they can be structured and sent across the consumers to be consumed or processed and for the messages to be processed the producer has to add these messages to the queue and these messages that the producer adds are usually small and can be things like requests replies error messages or plain information itself and one more thing which is really very important is to remember that many producers and consumers can use the queue but each message is processed only once by a single consumer okay remember that and one more thing these messages that you are sending to the queue does not require an immediate response to continue its processing and that is how we make it asynchronous and you might ask hey you said one consumer can process a message only once but what if there are multiple consumers that want to process a single message or information then i would say your question is really valid and yes there is a way to do this to achieve this the messaging queue or the message queue can be combined with a pub sub messaging pub sub is also called as publisher subscriber messaging in a fan out design pattern quite confusing isn't it don't worry we will discuss this when we talk about aws simple notification service for now i would ask you to create a whatsapp broadcast group and then go ahead add your friends in that broadcast group and send a message and ask them if they received it okay i think it will answer your question but we'll discuss this in simple notification service as well i have repeatedly told you about how we use message queues to decouple application workloads for the very same reason aws provides us with three major services to decouple our applications the first one is aws sqs which is a fully managed message queue for microservices distributed systems and serverless application the second one is aws sns which is a fully managed pub sub messaging service for microservices distributed systems and serverless applications and the third one is very important which is aws kinesis which helps us to easily collect process and analyze video and data streams in real time these three are going to be very important for the exam so please don't miss out on these next up we'll start off with aws sqs So if you liked what you saw please hit the like button comment on what you liked what you didn't make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's be friends on Instagram join me at Tafar Apollo and to watch more please click on the videos on the tab shown in the screen until then it's Python Holic signing off